Hello everyone. I hope you enjoyed my last video on the rotating cylinder. This video is a similar sort of problem. I have got two slopes, one at 45 degrees and one at 30 degrees. And on those slopes I have a cylinder represented by this roll of tape here. And the question is, what question can I ask here? What is there to ask about this arrangement? Pause the video if you wish to think about that before, before I continue. And the question is, what question can I ask about this arrangement here? Well, there's a diagram of the apparatus. And we can actually see the cylinder is resting on the two slopes. So the two slopes are pushing back on the cylinder. And we wish to know what are the forces P and Q that the slopes exert on the cylinder. We know the directions, we can see that from the diagram. And this cylinder has got a weight of 0 0.1 newtons. So, that's our question. What are forces P and Q, the forces that the slopes exert on the cylinder? Now, when we're working with force vectors and force vector diagrams, misconceptions can arise. So let me give you something to think about before we proceed. In this diagram, I've got two triangles with arrowheads, and these represent force diagrams, one on the left and one on the right. Now, they look identical, but there is a very, very important difference. And you can pause the video if you want to think about that. The diagram on the left consists of two forces acting on a body, and the third force shown is a resultant force. On the right, on the other hand, there are three forces acting on a body, and there is no resultant force. And that corresponds to our situation here, because our roll of tape is not accelerating. So there's no resultant force acting on it in any direction. The forces are balanced in all directions. And that's worth stating here. The forces are balanced in all directions, and sometimes we say the forces are in equilibrium. So, we can use that fact and we can proceed directly to a solution here. And I'm going to use a scale diagram. Now, if we know the value of one of the, our forces, and we do, that's 0 0.1 newtons acting vertically downwards, and we know the angle the other two forces make with that force, then we can construct a scale diagram of our situation. And indeed, we do have that information. And I'm going to choose a scale of one centimeter to correspond to 0 0.01 newtons. So my first line will be a 10 centimeter vertical line. Then I'll put in my other two lines and where they cross over will correspond, will be my triangle. And because it's a triangle, once I've taken my measurements and written them down, I can then use one of the triangle rules. For example, in this case, it shall be the sine rule to verify that my scale diagram was accurate. Let's see how that goes.
No, no, you're thinking. You're thinking this. We have waited six weeks just for you to show us how to draw a scaled diagram of a triangle, albeit with force vectors. That's a good point. That's a very, very good point. But there are more than one way to approach this question. We can also approach the question by evaluating and adding up components. If you can see from the diagram, if you can see from the diagram, and this is where it, this is where it looks similar to the cone question that we looked at last month. If we look at the diagram, we can see that the x direction vectors, the x direction components add to zero, and the y direction components also add to zero. And this is how we'll proceed with the question now and make sure we get this, the same answers for P and Q. First thing we decide, what should the direction of our coordinate system be? In other words, in which direction should we resolve our vectors to be? And to me, the obvious thing here would be horizontal and vertical. In other words, the x should be in the horizontal direction and the y should be in the vertical direction. And if we do that and proceed as we always have done, we should get the same answer for P and Q. Let's see how that goes. Now, for the purposes of clarity, I've drawn in the coordinate system and I've translated the three vectors up to that coordinate system. Then I've worked out the components of each of those vectors. When I've done that, I've written in bold the vector equation. That's in bold. And that has to be equal to zero, remember, according to Newton's laws. The forces are all in equilibrium, so therefore they add to zero. When you can put the components in, this is when you put the magnitudes of the vectors in and their direction. And remember, any vector pointing to the left or pointing down the way is necessarily negative. Solve the two sets of equations simultaneously and you get a value for P and Q. And that should correspond to the previous values that we got by scale drawing. And it does. Now, there's one other thing that I can do here that's instructive. Remember the forces and equilibrium. That corresponds to all directions. Not just the vertical and the horizontal directions. It, co it corresponds to all directions. So I can choose to resolve my forces along another direction. So what would that other direction be though? Well, the obvious thing, the obvious thing here would be along the slopes. But you might think, well, you don't have to do it now because you've already done it. That's true, but this is instructive. If I resolve the P and Q vector along the 45 degree slope, I don't end up with simultaneous equations. I just end up with one equation for P because the Q vector or the Q force is at right angles to the 45 degree slope. And if it's at right angles to the 45 degree slope, it doesn't have a component along it massively simplifying the question, as you can see in the solution here. Now, what I suggest that you do, why don't you resolve the P and Q vector along the 30 degree slope and get a value for Q that would just be one line. That would be, that would be an instructive and useful thing to do. Thanks for watching us because it's physicist. If you like the video, give it a like, leave a comment, or pass it on to someone who might find it interesting and they might subscribe as well. Because the more subscriptions I get, the more likes I get, the more comments I get, the more that encourages me to make them. Similarly, if you have an idea for a video or a question you would like me to illustrate through in the same sort of way, pass it on and I'll have a look at it. Uh, my next video shall be on a rotating system that's very, very similar. Apart from one or two wee details, to the question that I've done here. Thanks for watching us, Scottish as Physicist, and you'll s I'll have another video up for you shortly. Thank you very much.